What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Poetry Twisted Life and TV. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap and review of Queen Sugar. This is season five, episode one, the season premiere. I did not get the name of this episode, y'all. Forgive me for sounding so down. I hope my voice may be low. I am not in the best of physical feelings right now. But I wanted to go ahead and give you this video before um, I shut down. Because I'm not sure if what's going on with me is actually something physical. Or if it's like the beginning of um, uh, uh, an episode, a mental health episode where I like withdraw to myself. I can't tell sometimes. I just know that I start off with migraines and they go from days on end and then I'm like in a place. So, um... Hold on for a second, sorry. My lips dry. So, <laughs> my lip balms. <laughs> I rub mine on my lips like this. Mm. If you want to get some moisturizing, soothing lip balms, log into my website, www.survivebeauty.com, and pick you up a few of these moisturizing lip balms. You get up to eight hours or more on. You know, uh, eight hours or more of moisture on your lips. Like, even if you don't physically see the shine still there, you feel it. Like I'm saying, you feel it on your lips. Okay, so this episode I thought was so good. You know, y'all know I'm quick to always throw my shade at any TV show for real. But I thought that this was a good uh, opening episode for Queen Sugar. It gave us a sense of hope um, that we've been missing for a while. Because as I've stated before, this show, for me, it was like the modern day good times. And a lot of, of y'all disagree with that. But I felt like every time that they got their head above the water, something else happened and knocked them back down and that's what i meant in comparison to a modern day good times and we kind of had that moment a little bit in this episode we had a few highs and a few lows but for the most part the boat alone family was winning um now we know the hell is gonna break loose all this season we already know and i'm so here for it i'm so here for it uh we started off with nova doing a hair uh cutting ritual for herself and um, a lot of people call that witchcraft. No, she's pressing voodoo, hoodooism, you know, they call it all kind of stuff. Um, and these are like spiritual rites that have, that have carried on through some of our people throughout time. Um, and a lot of African tribes and a lot of Native American tribes, um, a lot of Hindus, um, like Buddhist tribes they have these type of rituals where the cutting of the hair is so symbolic of um, release, uh, transfer of energy back into the atmosphere. I don't know about y'all, but growing up, we could not throw our hair in a trash can. My mama would come behind us with a lighter and set it on fire. Um, one of the superstitions was that if you leave your hair in the trash, a bird will come take it away, make a nest out of it, and then you have headaches all the time. And see, that might be why I got my damn headaches. I need to start burning my damn hair again because I ain't burned my hair in a long time. I might have to start doing that again. You know what? That's the truth. I, and I'm not being, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm being serious right now. I've been having serious freaking migraines in the past few years, and I realize I don't burn my hair any longer. So I might have to start that practice over again. But as she was cutting her locks, she was saying a prayer, pretty much a promise um, of future days to come, um, giving thanks as well at, at, at each locks that she shed. And then she laid it in her altar and then, you know, set it on fire. Um, uh, in a lot of native cultures, um, the shedding of hair, cutting it, burying it, burning it, um, it, it has a very strong, significant um, meaning. You know what I'm saying? There's like a manifestation of your spirit. Um, when you lose a loved one, you know, this is a way to release them and uh, still respect and honor their energy, their presence, their spirit around. Um, 
but yeah like most times like even like with people when they cremate a body they do so because they want to release themselves back into which they from which they came you know ash to ashes dust to dust you know type of situation so that's what she started off saying um and it looked like like it's a brand new day for the border loans um everybody is getting ready to head down to the courthouse um it appears to be like a year maybe a year and a half has passed since the last season which technically speaking in real life that is how much time has really passed but um and the reason why i'm saying that is because they said this is charlie's second term and i believe as the council person um they get voted in every year so this is her second term and then micah later on through the episode was pledging and in most hbcus you can't pledge until you're a sophomore if i'm not mistaken if i'm wrong y'all correct me because i didn't go to hbcu and i didn't pledge but if i'm not mistaken you don't pledge until you're a sophomore um so that's what i'm thinking this is his second year um it's clear that micah has some disconnect with home or with his mom still we saw that developing over the last season that him and charlie was really having um growing pains that's the best way for me to say it as no michael grew up he wanted to become a more independent man he started getting more connected to social issues that um in the, in the manner in which he was uh, involved in these issues was not sitting well with Charlie. It's not necessarily that he was fighting for what's right. That was the issue. It was just how he was getting involved because he seemed to be doing it in her mind as a, um, without uh, consciously thinking about the consequences that his, his actions may have. Um, and you know there's a lot of a lot of people that's on both sides of the fence of that that argument um i think when i was dealing with the mike brown situation i used to go to different forums and things with people and like you hear the the older generation of people telling telling us or telling the, the audience that you know all the rules and the regulations that we need to do to comply sitting down and having that talk with your young your young one about what you need to comply just so you can make it home at night and then you have like my generation or younger out here saying um we we fight by any means necessary you know what i'm saying that's and that's the type of like so it's it's two different sides of the same coin we want the same result it's just two different ways of going at it and both of them are to me both of them could be at an extreme but that's where Michael was heading, his journey in. So I think that's what really started this disconnect between him and Charlie. So Michael had called and told her that he wasn't coming home for this uh, this hearing. Um, I don't know, I don't remember seeing Calvin in the beginning. Uh, Ralph Angel was having breakfast with Blue. He's grown up, he's getting so much bigger, you know coming into his sci-fi thing like in star wars star wars movies he's cooking dinner and he's still with darla they're still there i was so confused about what was going on with darla at first she started off um sick and we know that they're going to be incorporating the c19 in this show I was like oh shit y'all gonna tell me that the daughter got the c19 but then the fact that Ralph Angel and Blue was like hovering over her, trying to comfort her, make sure she ate her food. I was like, nah, that ain't what's it. That ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. Um, then I said, is she pregnant? You know, I think I asked while the show was going on like three or four or five times, is Darla pregnant? I mean, she did look more fuller in the face. Her nose seemed to be a little bit broader. You know, I was wondering. I also wondered, was Routina Wesley pregnant? And then somebody on Twitter was saying that she is pregnant. Last season, Routina Wesley was wearing a lot of big uh, loose garments as well which I was like is she pregnant or is she just gaining weight um, either way it, the weight looks good on her to me you know what I'm saying um, even the new fresh haircut too looked good on her as well um, so yeah that's what's going on with them um, and Rod's finna go down to the courthouse uh, I think Darla went too at that moment I don't remember I could be off I didn't take notes y'all apologize um, Aunt Vi 
She still got Vibes, Prize, Pies going on. Ooh, that name. She still got that going on. Her and, you know, Wood over there singing and dancing. And wasn't no, I love to see people dance when there's no music playing. If there was music playing in this scene, I don't remember it. <laughs> or maybe I thought that was the music from the school and not actually what was going on in the kitchen. But she was just feeling good, you know, making her pies, doing a little dance, and then making it love. Get down tonight. That's what her and Wood look like they're about to go do, you know what I'm saying? Wood last season had um wanted to start an organization or a business that was for the men folk, you know, so they could sit down and chop it up, you know, kind of barbershop style, but a safe space for bros to go to. Um because he realized that they didn't have that type of place in St. Joe's. Um, so he started his business too. But for some reason, he hasn't really got it off the ground yet. You know, um, Vi was trying to encourage him in so many ways. to Like, hey, you ain't got to worry about what's going on here. Go do your thing. Get your stuff off the ground. Get it moving. You know, all this input that you try to give me for my business, you can be putting it to your own. Um there may be some hesitation i think on hollywood's part as far as actually getting that business like really moving and grooving just by a couple of things that happened through the episode that made me feel that way um i'll go ahead and speak on now because it didn't really talk about it too much he was over there with ralph angel and prosper and they were painting the, um, the walls and everything and hollywood wants to again change the color of the paint they doggone they're done painting this wall and prosper and uh, rye had a bet on how many times that he was going to change the color of that wall again you know what i'm saying so that right there is giving me the impression that hollywood is having some type of hesitation um as far as like really getting the doors open, uh, maybe a sense of fear of getting the doors open. You know, he's going to be cooking over his spot too, you know, the hot wings and, the, you know, all that type of stuff going on. But it, it, it made me think that there's something else going on with Hollywood that he is, um, you know, maybe doubting whether or not he's going to be able to succeed, you know, um, with this business. So, um, like I say, Charlie, like I said, I talked about her. Uh, it's her second term. Charlie went back to her straight hair, but she cut it in a nice little short bob. You know, everybody was looking good. I mean, everybody was looking good. They came through in this first dog on episode. They look, they look rested <laughs> to me. They look rested, and so I, I, with them in their physical appearance, one of the things that was kind of kind of taking a lot of stress off their shoulders was that. They're going to the courthouse today because um, Ms. Oh my goodness, I, I, Boudreau is being sentenced to jail for the arson of the sh um, Queen Sugar Mill. And um, she still, you know, to this day, saying that she ain't had nothing to do with that. She innocent. And because uh, I think she was telling the judge, judge asked if she had any last words and she kept saying if I did this or if I did that and the judge was like hold up hold up hold up, hold up. like we only gave you the courtesy of uh, waiting to sentence you for right now because of the pillar that you were in the community but what I'm not going to let you do what I'm not going to let you do is rewrite history okay you were tried and you were found guilty and convicted you know what I'm saying you did that. You know what I'm saying? You did that. I'm not going to let you take that away from me. I'm not going to let you rewrite history. Pretending like you know, some, you, you're the victim in all this. No. Um, and then you see Parker standing in the background of the courtroom. And I was really, really... I, I, I really want to know her for real angle. Parker's real angle. On what she plans on... What her plans are for... Um, St. Joe's, which, you know, it, it seems to be they're the same as her daddy's. And I know there's a question out there, like, who is her mama? You know what I'm saying? Who is Parker's mama? She's definitely a black woman, you know. Is she Trudy? Is is Parker really um, Ralph Angel and Nova's sister? Okay. That is questions. We got questions. So, um... They go to the courthouse, you know, she gets sentenced to seven years, you know, hip, hip, hooray. Um, we all agree, I think. I think we all can agree. That's not enough time for her. However, it's probably typical um, for, for her. Well, it was shocking that she even got charged, you know what I'm saying? And she even got convicted. Um, but usually when they doll off those type of convictions to people who have been 
pillars of their community um, and such for such a long time, you know, we knew that the doggone since it was going to be lenient. She's probably up in Camp David, some doggone where, you know, drip, drinking on a Mai Tai, something like that, in, you know, in her, in her prison cell. Um, <laughs> but, but we was all saying that orange jumpsuit looked good on her. It looked better than the doggone red lips she used to wear. I'm just saying. Um, so, one of the things that we came into um, knowing was, like I said, Micah is pledging. And Charlie obviously don't know. I am very surprised that Micah is pledging. Not, um, and it's because he became so militant. And usually what I've seen oh, from guys that I know that have pledged and guys that I've seen who have that militant mindset, they usually aren't the same. Now you may have some people that pledge that are very active in their community, but Michael was kind of like on the militant side. So to see him pledging, I was like really shocked. You see he's still rocking that fat gold chain though. <laughs> I was really shocked about the fact that he was pledging. Um, so I'm like, so I'm trying to like really just get through the storyline real briefly here so I can get off this camera, get these lights out of my eyes. Um, what Nova got going on at home, Nova is now launching her own website, or so to speak, her own project where she can write and just like be open and free to everything, you know, that she feels like she want to write. She's still trying to uplift the community as much as possible. Uh, her boy, I can't think his name, with all the face piercings he's financially backing her but you know he don't want to be up here in no little bougie party that she have she having this little, little launch party he really don't want to be there he want to be out in the back smoke some weed but nova is now having to put on this new face you know she wants uh people to view her in a different way although deep inside she really want to be out there smoking weed too it's all about perception and she's trying to make herself look different in the eyes of other people i still I'm still pissed at Mo Nova. I am still pissed at Nova about that book. Um, you know, how long are we gonna forget? How long are we gonna hold on to the grudge, though? You know what I'm saying? How long are we gonna not forgive her for this book? For me, I don't know. It's gonna have to go away naturally. You could tell that Ra is still holding on to a lot of pain for what his sister um, has said as well. But you know, he's gonna try to be there for her for this launch. So. Um, one moment, please. Um, and I, I might be mixing stuff up, but forgive me. So we, um, while we're at this meeting, first of all, let me speak about Calvin for a second. It seems to me that this particular season, Calvin is going to be confronted with his desire to be an ally um, and supporter of Nova um, and his, his timidness for confronting his own family members who have that same type of, who have that racist stigma. Um, just from like him being at this party, all of Nova's friends kept throwing out questions to him about um, what, how he interacted with minorities on the job as a police officer, uh, where he took a stance. And um, he, there was a scene with Nova when he was in the, in the bedroom eating with his plate on top of her pillow. Now, first of all, I was pissed off about the goddamn plate being on my pillow, period. Then on top of that, you're going to add the fact that you're eating on top of my silk pillow. Okay. He ain't even got to know what the silk pillow for, baby. Silk is silk. And you got this plate on top of my silk pillow. If you're going to do that, go get a doggone terry cloth towel out the doggone bathroom. But don't eat on my top of my doggone silk pillows. And But this silk pillow specifically had meaning because this is the one that she maintained her hair with. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of us were bonnets, we wore skulls at night, and then some of us just got the satin pillow. And I'm speaking of satin pillow, let me go ahead and plug one of my face, my YouTube friends, Miss Keisha Charmaine. Y'all run over to her channel, go support her channel. She is a, a loctician, 
her guru, you know, got her own product line. And she also has, you know, bonnets, cute little bonnets that you could wear out in the middle of the street and it don't look like you're wearing your, like, shower cap. And she also got sick pillows, baby, that you can rest your, lay your head on my pillow. This is not a paid advertisement. She didn't ask me to do this. I just like to speak on people that I know got good quality product. And she has that. Because I was finna tell Nova, if, you know, Calvin spills some stuff on your pillow, go on holler at my girl, Keisha Charmaine. She can hook you up with some new ones, I'm saying. She might give you a discount. I don't know about free, but she could probably give you a discount. Anywho. Um, but that's just for Nova. That's not for everybody else out here in YouTube land. And I don't, don't go over there tell Keisha Charmaine I said that she gonna give y'all a discount because Portia said that that ain't what I said. That's not what I said. I said Nova. Board alone. You know. Okay. Um, and it was a maybe in front of that. But, uh, so that's what I'm thinking. This is what Calvin is gonna be dealing with this uh, season. In addition to, like I said, we had the pillow situation. We had his, her friends questioning him about his um, interaction. Um, with minorities and then you have Nova really back on her bandwagon of pro-black righteousness within the community and uplifting St. Joe's. Um, so while we're at her launch, you know, uh, Ralph Angel had already got a notice at the house, right? Um, before he left and Donald was like, you already knew something was wrong. His whole disposition changed. He was real angry, real tight-lipped and everything. Let me go back to tight lips. Ralph Angel kissed Darla. And that motherfucker lingered and bit his lip. And I nearly lost my shit. I, I don't know what it is by seeing brothers bite that damn bottom lip. That shit is sexy as fuck to me. He bit, and he's already, you know, Kofi is already a sexy chocolate mofo. And then he looking down, and when he looked, the way they had the angle of the camera made him look like he was looking at you. And he kissed, and then he did that slow. I was like, boy, boy. I went down, ran over to his Twitter like, hey, 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 boy, hey. You know what I'm saying? I did that. But still, that seemed right there. Okay, so anyway, but he was in a space. He was in space. He had read the letter. We didn't know what the letter said until we got over to Nova's, and he was like, hey, it's starting. I'm like, what you mean it's starting? You know, uh, you know, so Ralph showed Nova that and Nova's like, oh, what the hell? What you, what you mean? What you talking about, right? Um, Charlie came up like, hey, what's going on? And when Charlie was finna, they was finna pass the phone to Charlie so she could see what was going on. Everybody in the room, including Charlie, got a text message. Got a text message. Well, what's really going on? We go down to the council members. Let me tell you, for, let me stop for a second right there too. The guy who's playing Jackson, Jackson is, uh, came off as a bit assholerish on this show. Um, he played Titus on Ambitions. He, um, I think I know this man for real in real life. I think we were on a poetry scene together because he goes by the name Kenny the Poet. And I think I met him before. I'm in love with that man. He's so fucking fine. <laughs> He's so fucking fine. He was like getting on my dog on nerves because he was trying to like put Charlie in a place where he really needed to be putting his. But I was like, you fine. Oh my God, Kendra Cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Sorry, Mr. Jackson. I am for real. I'm just saying. He fine. But anyway, so they get to this council meeting. And they found out basically they finna take all the farmers land by eminent domain. If you don't know what eminent domain is, it basically means the government came in and said, okay, fine. You didn't want to sell to me? The government has an interest in these properties that we feel is going to be more beneficial to the community. And remember, they try to put that railroad or that road through town or what have you, what have you, what have you. The government is saying this is what's best for us. So since you don't want to sell, we have to take either all or some of your property. And we know that that train is going through the border on land. Ralph Angel is like, oh, no, these motherfuckers coming at me again? They trying to take my daddy property again. His blood, sweat, and tears went into this land. And I've been putting my blood, sweat, and tears into this land too. This is my land. I'm saying this is mine over here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all better do something. Do something, John. Do something. That's what I'm saying. You better fucking do something. And then Nova on top of the fact, she's like, yeah. And then our mama's buried out there too. It's a sacred burial land. You know what I'm saying? We we need to know that as well. Like, what, what, like come on now. What's going on? So they're at this council board council meeting, and somehow Parker is part of the council. I don't know when she got on the board. Uh, 
So Charlie, Jackson, Parker, and a few other people, they sitting there arguing about what's best for St. Joe's, what's best for the farmers. And the farmers, including Ralph Angel, Ralph Angel's like, no, y'all motherfuckers better do something. Y'all better stand up. Y'all, we put our trust in you to protect us. And now we finna get screwed. And everybody kept saying about what Charlie need to do. Charlie need to do. No, this ain't all on Charlie. It's on y'all. Y'all are the ones. Y'all the ones that convinced us. You know what I'm saying? So, it was like, it was like a, another slap in the face. And I'm like, I'm still trying to figure out like Parker. I guess she is really dead set. Park in Parker's mind, she think that having this railroad or this road or whatever coming through this town is gonna bring more um income into the community, which is gonna help the community. And Charlie's trying to get them get her to understand that we are the community. You know what I'm saying the people that's here, these farms. Parker think that the you no know, farming is kinda, you know, backwoods slavery type of shit going on and uh, Charlie looks at it like these forms are, are, are a statement of our ownership. You know what I'm saying? You take that away from us, then what the fuck do we have left that we can call our own? That's almost the kind of mindset. I don't know it's a little more, more deeper than that, but just the surface level mindset of what they were uh, debating for back and forth about. Well, Parker said, well, I got a, a proposition for you um, that you could take back to the farmers. We would take eminent domain off the table and double the amount of money that you know, we're gonna offer the farmers for the land. And I think it was one other contingency that was added onto that. And Charlie was like, hell no, I decline. I was like, wait a minute, Charlie. Wait a minute, you speaking for everybody? And then Parker said the same thing, you speaking for everybody? You sure about that? You sure about that? And she, yeah, I'm very sure about that. Um, Well, I can't remember exactly where they were at. Oh, they was having a function um, about St. Joe's. Micah didn't come to that either. That's why I said it's a, it's a big disconnect between Charlie and, and Micah. Micah didn't come back home for that either. Um, and they were basically, from this point on, every year they're going to start an annual shindig celebrating St. Josephine, the black woman who St. Joe's was named after. I think we talked about this before. St. Joseph is a fictitious town, so I do like this little spin on it. They're giving the town some meaning. It gives the town a little bit more history. It gives the town a little bit more character. I wish they would have explained a little bit more why uh, the town became happened to become named after her, things like that. I was, I was like, okay, what's going on? What's, what's with St. Josephine? Who is she? That's how I was feeling. Um, while they're at this shindig, um, Parker gets up and she starts to speak and she's saying, okay, y'all guess what's up? I'm not going to bring the, 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 the railroad or nothing through St. Joe's or what have you. What we going to do, or we're not going to bring it through the farmer's land or majority of the farmer's land. Very few people are going to be affected, but what we're going to do, we're going to take it down 21st street and such and such. And I want to thank y'all. Thanks, Charlie, for helping me with this deal, broken this deal. You know, she's she looking out for y'all. Good looking out, Charlie. You know, she threw all that on the back of Charlie. Um, and everybody like, wait a minute. You know, they was all happy for a second. They said, wait a minute, think about it. 21st Street. 21st Street. They finna uproot the effing cemetery, y'all. The cemetery. It's amazing to me that um, a lot of native tribes their burial grounds are considered sacred and are not supposed to be touched by eminent domain and other things like that but when it comes to cemeteries where black bodies are buried they will strip the hell out of that and relocate your, your loved ones they did that in st louis they uh tore up the cemetery and relocated them somewhere else and i'm like i don't know where my heck my great great auntie might bury that no more i used to walk through the cemetery we used to cut the cemetery to go to high school cut the cemetery and her grave site would be right there and then they uprooted people they didn't tell them they was they took it by eminent domain the airport did and they ain't, the airport ain't even close to this damn place but anyway yeah so but I noticed that when it comes to burial sites where black bodies are buried or where minority communities are buried, they will strip that shit up like, you know, paint off a dresser. They, they will strip it up real quick. Um, so, yeah, once it all sunk in that this is what's going to happen and then she made sure to let them know the border loan form ain't going to be touched. Oh, Parker was throwing a heavy salt, heavy salt over to Charlie because she just got cut the fuck open. She just got cut the fuck open right there because now everybody like, Charlie, what the hell you mean? They ain't finna uproot my loved ones, you know? And I once 
they, it didn't happen this particular episode, but once these people realized that Charlie turned down this money without consulting them, I think it's going to be hell come tell the captain, baby. Who child? Um, that's pretty much the gist of this whole episode with the exception at the end. All through the whole episode, I kept wondering why was Blue, uh, not Blue, Dollar and Ralph keep throwing these little looks like they had a secret or something. That's what it took me back to maybe she was pregnant again too. But no, what was going on, they was just like exchanging energy, exchanging love, you know, exchanging la da 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 this, la da 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 that. And Ralph Angel dropped down on one knee and proposed to Dollar and she said yes. So we ended with a happy ending. So, you know, yeah, that's it. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode of Queen Sugar. I said this episode, ep episode of Queen Sugar. And just in case you did not know, Queen Sugar season six will be airing this year as well, 2021. Uh, it's going to come on in the fall. So we're going to get two doses of Queen Sugar this year, 2021. You know what I'm saying? Get your insulin ready, baby, because it's going to be sweet up in here. Talk to y'all later. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.